to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. This morning my focus is going to be to help you move from a certain level of your life to another level. I want to see if I can help you move from survival to living. God is not in search of perfect people to make use of. God is not in search of people who in your idea are perfect. God is in search of available vessels. The church of Jesus seems to be coming to a, a place in history where it seemed like everybody is asking what can be done. There's no time I have sat down to study on the subject of the church more than I am doing now. I found out this is the whole thing I am doing recently or currently. I had a meeting with all the pastors in Afipo recently. That was on Friday night. Pastors from Abaklike Church, from Iko Church and Afipo Church converged together. And I was trying to inspire them throughout the whole night. Of course, this season I've been touring around Nigeria. I traveled on Wednesday across two states or so. And then came back on Friday morning, on Friday evening rather, and from Friday evening took off to Afiko. I've not been able to have an aggregate of up to six hours sleep. I don't think I have had that within this week. Because there seemed to be a demand on my shoulders to undertake something that most of you you were expecting maybe your governors or expecting your president to be the one to champion. I said something to the church or to the pastors in Africa. I said, the greatest thing that can happen to you as a Christian is to know the script for your time. Everything we are preaching in the church is not relevant. The greatest thing that can happen to you as a man of destiny, that is if you are one, if you know this is your life, you are not living for survival, you are living for an essence and a purpose. The greatest thing that can happen to you is to know the script for your time. Is to know what God has written specifically for your own time. Jesus did not fulfill his ministry and his assignment on earth until he found out the exact spot where the vision, the blueprint, the purpose, and the plan of God for his life was spelled out. The Bible said it clearly. He entered the synagogue. That's in Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And then the book was handed over to him. He picked it up, opened it, and he read from the exact place in the Bible where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Let's see this, verse 17. And he, had, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. Of course, when this thing he's quoting now, this thing I'm going to quote, when this stuff was written, everybody listen though, when this stuff was written, Jesus was not yet born, of course. This stuff was written over 500 years before the birth of Jesus. Over. From the book of Malachi down to the book of, you know, Matthew, if you look at the book of Malachi, Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Is that correct? Is that correct? 
then Matthew is the opening, you know, book in the New Testament, the first book in the New Testament. Between Malachi and Matthew, there was 400 years of prophetic silence. That means there was no voice that was speaking of anything whatsoever. 400 solid years. Then now, back date from Malachi to Isaiah, you see if you do the aggregation, more than 600 years. What was prophesied about one man? More than 600 years. Isaiah spoke of the prophecy. Then Jesus comes now, after many years, hundreds of years have come and gone. And then he picks that same book and he opens it up and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's verse 17. He found the place where it is written. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Of course, this was what was written concerning Jesus specifically. It was not written to so many people. It was written to him alone. So he found that spot. He found that verse where the blueprint for his life was inscripted. And see the next thing he said when he was done read, read, reading it. He said, okay, to proclaim the acceptable of the Lord. Okay, verse 20 quickly. Then he closed the book. He closed the book. And what did he do? And gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And of course, the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. What were they fixed on him waiting to... They were, what is he going to say? What is that scripture talking about? What is the interpretation of that scripture? What's next after reading it? The next thing he said, verse 21. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Uh, okay. I, I want to help you understand something. When you see the word fulfilled, fulfilled cannot be used to talk about something that is abstract. Hello? You can't use the word, okay. I can't say this water bottle. But this bottle that is fulfilled. Hello? It does not know. Because it's abstract. It's inanimate. It can neither feel. It doesn't have emotions. Only human beings can say, I am fulfilled. Is that right? Even animals can say, I am fulfilled. Only human beings can say, I am fulfilled. Why? Because they can feel. They can touch. They can sense. They can... Um, they can reason. And when you are fulfilled, you know. Hello? When you feel fulfilled in life, you know. You can be doing a business and you're not fulfilled doing it. You can be working in a bank or working somewhere and you're not fulfilled working there. So now I want to show you something that you have not seen in that scripture. He said, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled. The question I want to ask is, are scriptures human beings? Are they not letters? Do scriptures have emotions? Do they have feelings? Do they, do they understand? Do they have reasoning? Scriptures, are they not written things? Letters. How can I pick this calendar, for, in, for instance? I said today, everything written in this calendar is now fulfilled. How can I say your textbook is fulfilled? But Jesus said something. Today, not tomorrow. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What does it mean? Every scripture is written destiny. Every scripture is written for a person. The Bible is a word or is a book that describes 
your essence in life. The Bible is a scripture that contains the scripts, the written script of your destiny. Can I say this to you, church? Because the whole of this year and beyond, you will hear me preach any other thing other than what God is preaching now. You will hear me preach all these jargons and dogmas churches are preaching. I'm going to stay on what God is preaching now and that's what I'm going to be sounding till the end of this year. How can we go back to heaven and God opens the whole of the Bible and He's showing every one of us in the church. Look at your own script. You didn't fulfill it. Look at your own script. You didn't fulfill it. Have you ever gone to where they shoot movies before? Ramsey Noah, Genevieve and all of all that. Do you know what makes a character is a script? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? What makes a character play the role he's meant to play is the script written. Messi Johnson can be Messi Johnson. Nice girl, beautiful girl, humble girl. But anytime Messi Johnson is hired to act the movie, the script that she's acting defines her character. Is somebody here know what I'm saying? So the moment she comes in, it is now the script of a house girl. And Mr. Josie, who is never a house girl in a husband's house, becomes a house girl. She becomes to maybe the dirty girl. Not because that's how she is, but because of what is written in the script about that room. Patience or circle. She could be a kind woman, naturally. God-fearing, humble, down to earth, not able to, you know, hurt people. But now, they have written a script. And the role she's supposed to play in that script is the role of a witch. The role of a wicked mother-in-law. So she appears on the script as she's acting like a wicked mother-in-law, talking rash, acting wild, and all that. And at the end of the day, ah, patience or so is a wicked woman. No, she's not a wicked woman. It is the script that they find her character. You know why most people are confused in life? Product of abuse. Jumping from one place to the other. Living a life of meaningless. Living a life of purposelessness. They have not found the script written for their life. What makes me the man I am? What makes me the person I am? What makes me pursue what I pursue? What makes me drive in the direction I drive? What defines my life and defines my destiny? Defines my future? Defines my essence and my being in life? Is the understanding of the script written concerning me. And that script is found in the scripture. That script is not in Hollywood. That script is not in Bollywood. That script is not in uh, Nollywood. That script is found in the scripture. Jesus found his own. And what made him fulfill. You know, it amazes me how we all claim to be Christians, yet we are not Christians. We claim to be following Christ. See the pattern with which the man fulfilled destiny. And most of us are not following the pattern. Okay. His time came and he left. It was now turn or the turn for the apostles, the disciples of Jesus to fulfill their own. Do you know the scripture that was written concerning Jesus was not the same scripture written concerning Peter and the twelve? It was not the same. It was not the same. It was not the same. They were Jesus' disciples. But they had times and seasons. The Bible talks about the church of Issachar. So they were men who understood the times. And they knew what Israel ought to be doing. So, if you're going to fulfill destiny, you must be a man who understands the times. And you must know what you are meant to be doing. I'll be the greatest fool of a pastor on earth. If what I'm teaching at this time is deliverance. Come out, fall down, fall down. That's not what is happening to the nation now. I'll be a big fool if that's my message. I've been able to find the spot where what is written for the church now is. And if the church of this age will hook up to it, you will turn the destiny of Nigeria around. This 
issue of headsmen, this issue of whatever killings going on in this country is just showing us how much the church misunderstood their calling. Sometimes when God put this kind of message on me, I say, God, we don't understand it. Most of them are young. We don't understand it. God say, it's their time. So talk to them about it. This is I was speaking to my son, the pastor in charge of Africa Church. In the hotel room. And I told him something. He was talking to me about his, a series of conference he wants to do. Okay, he's doing one in, in February for all the secondary schools in Afibo. And he was telling me, he says, sir, do you know the problem now is not even with adults, so it's with teenagers. He said, you need to know what is going on here, sir. I said, I know, I know. That's what our ministry is designed for. To look at the problems currently going on. And tackle them. It's beyond church. It's beyond speaking in tongues. I said, another way you should also tackle is NYSC. I said, tackle them. Because you go to Nigerian youth call now, bunch of confused human beings. Heading nowhere. They can't write CV. Some of them don't have any definition of their life. They are just scattered like sheep without shepherd. Look at what is going on in Nigeria. Do you know, sir, that all it takes to bring Nigeria to a standstill is just a correct mobilization of the NYC. Just National Youth Call Service can correct the problem going on in this country. But why can't nothing be done? We complain about hooligans and stupid politicians in power. Old men of 70 years, 80 years, coming back to be your president and be politicians and governors. Cabals who don't have the interest of this country at heart. And the question is who voted them in? Who put them in power? You two have no definition for their life. You two don't know their destinies. The same people they used to perpetrate talkery in this nation. And young people, I watched the interview of a particular young boy holding a microphone and interviewing an old man. And the old man, he asked the old man, what do you think about this fuel scarcity in the country? After he talked and talked and talked, I don't know this, this other question he asked him. And the man said, let me tell you something. The problem of Nigeria is not these people in power. He says it's the young people. It's the young people. You guys are too distracted. He says the young people. He said, who voted them in power? People who should be in their villages sleeping. Or maybe in their graves. Are back to power. Go and check from the time of colonization down to the time of independence. The same set of people are still recycling in the corridors of power. And then we are living in a time. God prophesied it in the book of Joel to the prophet Joel. That in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He says sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see vision. Nowadays, what do you see? Young men and women who are too stupid, and you, I don't know. Oh, this your chin and t-shirt with big chain. Go and burn them. That's what is confusing you. I didn't come here to entice you with the normal wisdom of man's word. I came here to provoke you to destiny. You are living in a time the devil is running the show. Running the show. But there is a script written for your relevance this age. And some of us don't know it. Go to where you see camp and see confusion. You don't need to vote or to be voted into presidency to change this country. All you need to know is know this country, know the history, know the destiny of Nigeria. And why she can bring us up to a standstill. Do you know how many millions of youth coppers we have in this country? Whose concern is, what they do now is they get that uh, call up stupid call up letter, God have mercy on NYC. And then they go and post it on Facebook. Finally, I'm called up. To serve what? Serve your motherland. Do you know what service is? This service is going to be attached in one company or in one industry and collecting 18,000 or 19,000 alawi. If it's really national youth service, this is the time to do the service. This season of uprising, where Fulani Hesmen are killing, this is the time. If you know what the youth, what the youth of a nation can do to a nation, 
The Bible said the glory of a youth is their strength. The glory of old men is their gray hair. Election is coming. We will still be the one to go and carry guns for them. Who fuse up the hotels? They build hotels for you all over the city. So you can go and waste your life. You cannot engage yourself in any meaningful thing. I usually talk to some lady and I tell them, who be tight? You don't understand anything. When politicians win election, they carry you in fleets of cars from one hotel to the other. You don't have a, you don't know you are an Esther. And for the young men, they make you talks. Who are the people singing the praises of government? Old people? No, young people. Psychophants. Which youth movement have you seen in Nigeria shaking Nigeria? Which one? Is it Nans that is shaking Nigeria? Don't you have an association of Nigerian association of Nigerian students? Is it Nans that is shaking Nigeria? That one has gone political too. Bring it down to your university. Is he SUG that is shaking Nigeria or shaking the state? They put too many distractions around us. Put too many jamborees around us. They know what excites you or what excites you. They give you, uh, you know, it won't take anything for your state government to bring fino and flavor here to waste your time. It won't take them anything. They won't bring you intellectual minds to educate you and spoil you up to destiny. They won't do it. It's fino, Star Trek. It's okay, Bakasi. I go die. That's what it will bring for you. Glow laughter. So they can waste your time and waste your life. And uh, energy, energetic young men who are supposed to be forming synergy at this time. See how numerous we are. But see how scattered we are. Everywhere. Just roaming about. From one place to other. No synergistic partnership of young people. They want this government to be afraid. Let young people unite. It starts from the church. That's why when I see how young people in church today behave, you don't take service serious. You don't take commitment serious. You don't take faithfulness serious. You don't take involvement serious. You are here today, you are there tomorrow. You are involved today, tomorrow you are detached. You are consistent today, tomorrow you are inconsistent. It doesn't matter whatever theory you have postulated concerning the change of Nigeria. It won't come to pass. Change does not happen in theory. It happens in practice. Change is not a theoretical thing. Can't transform it. I don't care how much you write on Facebook. On WhatsApp. I don't care how much you write on social media. You will not change nothing by being so theoretical. It will take pragmatic practicalization of theories to bring this nation to change. As some of you have asked that, what is your vision for this country? You will know nothing. There's some comedies I watch, I cry. You ask somebody, what's the national anthem of Nigeria? She cannot recite. What was the pledge of Nigeria? He can't recite. Some of you, you see it on your WhatsApps, comedies, and you just laugh about it. It's a pitiable situation. It's not something to laugh about. There's some music. Matter of, I don't care. It's not my issue. My own is to go. I, I, I was looking at a young lady the other day. What do you think about the issues in Nigeria? Say, it's not my business. So my business is just to work where I'm working. Get my salary and feed my family. That's all I want. Just want to be eating my food. That's all. We are talking about kingdom service. I need to understand. I need to get you to understand what the kingdom truly is. Okay, can, can I show you another man in the Bible who found out the scripture for his own time? Jesus found his own. Very clear and simple. He said, this is why I came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And of course, you recall when Jesus was done with his assignment. 
and went to be with the father he gave an instruction to the apostles he said go up to the upper room and then tarry there until you'll be endued with power from on high then you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and all the uttermost parts of the earth and this man went up and they started praying why were they waiting why were they praying why were they waiting to receive a specific word from God for their time because listen to me all the uprising in Nigeria will keep deepening your confusion if you don't know what to do some of you who don't know what to do, where do we start from how do we handle this what do we do None of you, most of you who don't know because you don't want to pay the price to separate yourself from all the entanglement of this generation and then pitch a tent where God can infiltrate your spirit with kingdom ideas that can cause you to be an agent of revolution in this age you don't want that price it's a costly price to pay I am leading a revolution now in this country whether you know it or not a revolution that will bring Nigeria to a standstill I don't need to be the son of Donald Trump to do it. Check what the people God used in the, in, in, in the Bible. They didn't come from all the kingly and queenly families. Oh. Check Gideon. Check Joshua. Check um, Moses. Check all of these guys. What it takes is to be a man who is pregnant with people's destiny and vision. Let the Spirit of God brood over you. Be a man who knows how to wait on God. Be a man whose hunger, heartbeat, pursues after important things. If God wants to settle the destiny, settle your destiny and the destiny of your generation for life, He gives you a national vision. Some of you have small, small... How old was David when he caught a national vision? David was only 14 years old when he killed Goliath, not 17. 14 years old. He didn't catch a vision for his house, for his school, for his streets, not for his classroom. It was at the age of 14 years that a young man saw a problem in Israel. And he left the interior primitive bush and went into the military barracks and met his brothers. He said, this issue you guys are having in this country, what will be done for the man who kills this man? And because of the small nature of the guy, 14 years old boy, Coming out from the bush, his job in the bush was just to look after the father's sheep, look after the father's cattle, and that's it. So what does a guy who has just business with the father's sheep and cattle, what business does he now have with the affairs of a country? I should notice, or I should know very well, that when David was in the bush, he was studying the country. He was studying the affairs of the nation. He was mapping out strategies. How do I conquer? Of course, so was the military chief or the king or the president of Israel at the time. Couldn't do anything about the country's issue. All the big, 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 big army, the lieutenants and the colonels and the major generals and all that in the army of Saul could not do anything about the issue of Israel until one small boy appeared. When this boy appeared and spoke to his brothers in the army, what will be done? You know the first thing the brother said to him? He said, my friend, get back to the bush. Who did you leave Papa's cattle for there? Who did you leave those helpless sheep for? This is not a matter for small boys. It's a matter for people who have come of age. God doesn't consider age to use you. Is somebody here what I'm saying? No, it does not. 
it does not. I don't care whether you are in pre-degree, whether you are in degree, or whether you are post, whether you are in post-degree. I don't care. God does not consider your age to use you. He doesn't consider where you are now to use you. Are you willing to make yourself available to Him and let Him get you pregnant with the national vision? And do you know what David said to them? Of course, the brother told him, I know your pride. I know your arrogance. I know your haughtiness. You have come out to show yourself in the war so that you'll be seen, right? Get back to the bush. And David looked at the brother and said, Is there not a cause in Israel? Is there not a cause in Nigeria worth dying for? Is there not a cost in this country worth losing your sleep? Some people who don't know anything about what we are doing here, who don't have the kind of education some of you have, who don't have the kind of access some of you have to information, have decided that until they buy this country, they won't rest. And all we do here is to post all kinds of jargons on social media and then do nothing about it. And people are all over this country advocating for colonies. Do you know what colony is? Do you know what colony is? Before the colonization of Nigeria, Nigeria was a colony of the British. You had the Southern Protectorate, you had the Northern Protectorate. In 1914, they were amalgamated and then became... Go and read your history. Go and read your government if you don't know this stuff. And now, after post-colonial era, we're having another kind of colonial colonization going on now. And people are asking for the passing of the bill of Katu Kol. I don't know for crying out loud when we moved from colonizing human beings now to colonizing cattle. Yeah, you know there's some of you know your business. Wait until the bomb drops on your streets. You understand it's your business. Wait until they invade until they invade your territory. You will know this thing happening in this country is your business. It's not my business, it's not my business. It's not me who they are killing in Taraba. It's not me who they killed, they killed, they killed in Benue State. It's not me who they killed. They... Don't worry. Don't worry. The penalty for sitting still. <laughs> the penalty for not standing up and doing something. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm talking to you the way I'm talking to you because you may think that it's your senators and politicians. Who will do something about this? Sorry, it's not them. Most of them have settled their destinies outside here. They have settled their, some of them have their children abroad. Some of them have built houses abroad. They have sent their family abroad. Now here you day, or can I hear you day? You are here. I know some of you don't have passports. You don't have visa to even Cameroon here. You don't have visa to Benin Republic here. Now here you day. Some people just enter your country and spoil the country for you and then they move. Say Boo Boo's son had an accident, power bike accident. And then I don't know what they say happened to his brain. They tried it in Abuja, it couldn't work. They flew him to London. Is that right? How many of you would sit down comfortably in your house? And watch an invade, invader enter your house and tell you to pack out. There's somebody just enters like my house now. And co- comes in and just sit down in the parlor. And goes to my fridge and open it and brings out Pepsi. Open the uh, brings out a uh, wine. Chapman. And he pops it. Poops. They think just, you know, with his friends. And he sits down. I just come from my room. I'm like, who are this? And he says, okay, are you the owner of this house? He says, yes, I'm the owner. I say, we are now the real owner. Leave. Pack out. How many of you will not fight? You just say, yes, sir. Go inside your room. I go and start collecting your clothes. Yes, Lord. Blessed are the meek. For the, it is for they shall inherit heaven. They shall inherit the earth. Even the meekest, the most humble, is meant to inherit scriptures. You are calm. They increase for a price. You are calm. They increase price of uh, whatever. You are calm. They increase your hair, your haircut. You are calm. 
if we begin to protest against every injustice in this country, it's starting to increase again. You go to Babi Saloon, the guy increases it from 200 to 400. Let everybody carry their head the way it is. Don't bat. Then let's see which Babi Saloon will make money. But you still go and patronize them. They increase fuel. Pack your cars. Don't drive. Let's start trekking. Then let's see if stations we have cars too. Because Nigerians are docile people. We are so comfortable with injustice. So they keep doing injustice in this country. Because either ways, we have a way out of everything. Because of our individuality and egocentrism. We don't think of any other thing apart from what benefits us. A man saw where a citizen of America was being beaten, brutalized by a policeman. Beaten anyhow. Beaten anyhow. You know what he did? He brought out his camera, took the picture, went to the court and registered the case. And sued the police. I think it's, in, it's uh, in the Los Angeles Police Department. Sued the Los Angeles Police Department for brutalizing a citizen of America. They are raped police to court. The man came. Then the guy who is victim of the brutalization was also in court. But he was not the one standing in the, what do you call it? Is it cabin? Witness box or whatever you call it. He was not the one standing there. It was the guy who took the picture who was standing there. Speaking for his fellow countryman as though it was him who was beaten. Because that thing you tolerated happened to your brother. is coming to happen to you. That thing you didn't speak against that happened to your citizen. Your fellow countryman is coming towards you. One day you will see it. The reason I fight for justice is not because what happened to that one happened to me. It's because if I don't address that one, it will happen to me soon. The guy was in the witness box speaking against that stuff. Shoot the police and demanded for compensation in, in dollars. And the judge of the court had no other option. Having heard all the uh, whatever, you know, stories and all that, found the police guilty and then he demanded that the police pay for damages in cure. Right there and there, they had to pay and beg that guy, that citizen, for just one small slap and beating they gave him. They had to pay. They had to pay. They had to pay. When they paid the man, the man went to the guy who took, he didn't even know somebody took the pictures or whatever. Went to him and was like, wow, thank you. What do I give you? Let's share the money. He said, no, I am not taking a dime out of that money. Why are you compensating me for being patriotic? Why are you compensating me for doing what every city in this country should do for themselves? The man left the court disappeared. That's, his, that's what he wants. Here, a policeman catch you and beat you. People will be looking from their window. You don't know that police brutalization is a crime. In America, they arrest you as a criminal. You cannot be detained beyond 24 hours or if your case is too grievous or whatever, heinous. 24 hours you are charged to court. Nobody detains you for the 8 hours. Here the thing for eight hours, you can't do nothing. And we have a country of young people. We have a country of youths. Because we are afraid of losing our lives. Paul said, my life is poured out as a libation. You are afraid of talking. And they will beat your brother, your countryman. Put people in cell 72 hours on one week. Injustice in this nation. Corruption at the highest level. Yet we are so docile, we don't know what to do. Tomorrow will be your own turn. How can Christianity flourish in a country where darkness is ruling? Let's just concentrate on our church and be doing church. No, 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 no. I'm concentrating on the nation because church will if will be affected if the nation is adversely affected. It was one day those guys who carried cattle walked into these premises and there I was so angry. These ones were not carrying guns, just their normal walked in here. Do you know what this, I was sitting outside here? These guys carried their cows and entered here. Somebody's compound. 
and we're eating grasses here. I was watching it carefully. Who was there with me that day? I was watching it carefully. I was like, who are these human beings? They carried their feet of cow. Do you know what pain me was? The, 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 the cows moved from that position with their full and men and they bypassed me behind me. The guy gave me a good afternoon, sir. He just carried his car and was going around my compound. I had to send one of the pastors or somebody with me to go and warn him and tell him to get those things out of here. They don't have fear. And nothing pays me like that. To see people who are so bold to perpetrate crime. And they are asking you, telling you, what can you do? Imagine you and your wife walking to shop right now. Somebody stops you, holds your wife and slaps her. Slaps her again. I don't see you. What can you do? Imagine it. That's what is going on in this country now. And while you, if you touch my wife again, I would slap you. He gives her another one. Gives her another one. And he tells you, come and touch me. Let me see. We are preaching messages of egocentrism. That is why our country has not changed. God is going to give you a car. Amen. That's what is killing us here. Do you want a wife or a ticket? How many husbands do you want? You can even receive several right now by the Holy Ghost. (laughs) That's what is killing us. But it's affecting everyone now. Both the Grace Church, the Kingdom based Church, the Deliverance Church, Prayer House Church, everybody is crying the same cry. Nobody is crying Deliverance cry. Everybody is crying the cry according to Buhari. Everybody is crying the cry according to the state of Hesmen. I don't care what your church is called, whether it's digital or analog, whether it's soji or unsoji. I don't care what it is. Now you're feeling it. Everybody now you meet is talking one language. But the grace preachers, the kingdom preachers, the deliverance preachers, the prayer warriors, or what do you call them? Everybody, the same thing. He's now telling on us. I think the rain that falls, falls on everyone. Does rain select who to fall on? I know this one is the grace church. So let's not fall on grace church today. Fall on kingdom church. This one is a deliverance ministry. Fall on them. This one is Catholic. This one is rich. Don't fall on them. Fall on the poor. The rain that falls from heaven falls on all. Whether it be good or bad or rich or poor, small, old, it falls on all. For want of time, I won't read you Acts of the Apostles where Peter was talking about what was written concerning his own time. I'll leave that one. I had to touch on this issue to let you know that there is a kind of mindset we need to have now. God is counting on you. Don't think you are small. It requires synergistic partnership. Everybody must abandon his own personal pursuit, my ambition, my ambition. You know what happens to a broom when you detach it from a bunch? So if you like, go and become a professor. If you're not forming synergy this period, there is nothing for you. It can break you. The people who are killing in this country are not profs. They, they don't have education. They are illiterates. They sent me a video of a few of them where they were dancing. With their AK-47 rifles. Just seven of them. Yet causing this military or whatever you call it. Just a group of few organized people. You know the problem of the church? We are not organized. Mba. Church is only organized on Sunday morning. Anything after Sunday morning, everybody to your tent, oh Israel. You finish two hours mass or three. You are back home. Then the whole week, nothing is going on.
your it is already a stooge. That's one stooge there. That's the country we are living in now. There should be clear division of power between executive, legislature, and judiciary. Now, both legislature and judiciary are in the executive. Can I talk in this country? God punish your senators and your governors who are killing this nation. I don't care about any of them. I don't care about them. Ben Bruce was on TV in the Senate House talking about the injustice. He said, when did legislature, the red chambers, become executive? When? I pity pastors who have sold their birthright, who can't tell the truth in this country because you want governor's favor. God punish him and punish your senators who are perpetrating crime and injustice in this country. There are some of us who have gone, I can look at your stupid, smelly money and tell you perish with it. There's one now who is telling us Buhari is a God sent. That the church prayed and God gave us Buhari. He's a nice man, humble man. The wife, beautiful, humble. The children, intelligent, humble. Yeah, the son has a five million power bike. What does he do for a living to buy it? Why would he smash his head? And I'll pass judgment on that one soon. Because if Pharaoh won't let his people go, his son has to go. What a hell. He should come. I think he's going for Isa Elbuba now. And the rest. And the next in line. He should come. From this small city set on a hill. Called Abakleke. A voice is roaring in this country. And don't, don't feel. Oh, he's all past what I know. I'm so close to him. How is he going to do that? The zeal of the Lord. He's going to perform it. If you join me on it, join. If you don't want to retreat. We are not looking at people who are withdrawing where we should be re- advancing. It should pain you. This is your mother's land. Nigeria is your country. You are a Nigerian. You are facing Nigeria before a Christian. You are facing Nigeria before an Islam. You are facing Nigerian before a Hindu. What is this religious divide? What is this ethnic divide? Fulani headsmen are killing people everywhere. So with the three buried in one day in Benue State. And that's just the one, the number though. We've not talked of the many. There are no numbers. I was driving from somewhere. From one of the states I visited within the week. While I was coming from a particular bend, a bus had just smashed a particular hill. And everybody needed that. Just lit on the, okay, we left that place. Come, you need, you need to see the sight. The moment I, I, because this Enugu and Oka road is not, is not properly, properly put in shape. For how many years? That road is not much trouble. So there's another bypass through that Potakot road. You just turn, you know, right? And then you start going very sharp then. Of course, while I was going, I had to make sure the siren of my car was on. They put it on the lounge this thing. So that it, because you don't know which car is coming. The bend is so, it's like a sea. You're bending like this. You don't know. So nobody knows you are coming. Nobody knows you are going. The only way is that you're, if you are fortunate and you are a big man like me, you know. <laughs> and you have a car that makes noise. That's the only way out. This one was driving. I don't know how. And I suppose that accident, it happened late in the night. Or at the earliest part of the morning, a highest bus. Tony, I don't know what he drove, was smashed. If you see the bus, then I slowed down at that point and I looked. Everyone in the bus, some beheaded, some arms out. They were all lying down on the road, dead. I, I will show you why I'm saying this now. Lying down. Then a few road safety officials who were there looking and bringing out some. There was nobody. You know, usually when accidents happen in a major place, people come out. This one, there was nobody there. That means that road is a deserted place. There are no residents. People don't live here. 
if you know what the irresponsibility of this government has cost this country, what the irresponsibility of government has cost this nation, go to develop nation and see how roads are built. No proper marking in Nigeria. No proper signets. Nothing like slow down, sharp bend ahead. You don't see it. They just carry quota and pot. That's it. They build road. And we go and start singing their praise. So, so, and so is working. So, so, and so is doing this. So, so, and so is doing. God will soon shut your mouth up. If you don't shut that dirty mouth. That's what they call statutory, statutory roles of government. This nonsense dividends of democracy. I don't know where it's coming from. There's nothing like dividends of democracy. Democracy is not a dividends. When you put government in power, they go there to represent the interests of the people that put them there. You shouldn't clap hands for them because they put you rose. It's your right. My friend, I feel like busting here right now. It's your right. It's your right. You don't clap for your rights. You don't clap for it. Psychopathy and grief will kill us in this nation. Because you want to be to be praised, you want to be in the favor book of it. You don't know who called you, that is why. If God calls me, He's gonna sustain me. God has given me a voice like Jeremiah to address the problem of nations. Call kings to order. Send talks after me. Oh, if you kill my body, you didn't kill the spirit. Paul said to die is gain. What are you saying? What did I lose? You can't even kill a man whose time is not up. We left from that area, got down to the military checkpoint, queue everywhere, tanker had fallen down, exploded, and the tanker fell down on another bus. So imagine a tanker that fell on a bus or a car, and people can't come out. Fuel is already gushing out, the next thing, it explodes. Ain't no good here, ain't no good here, explodes. Explodes. And I got to the I checked, I stopped. I looked at the military room. I said, why? How did this thing happen? Why well, was he asking to know how? Lo and behold, a, a, a road safety van, blowing siren, disturbing headlamp on, double traffickator on, running helter skelter, you know, making, and I was like, what is going on? And they boycotted the traffic. When I turned back, heaps of human beings inside, like they were bags of rice. I'm not telling you what happened in two days. In less than one hour of it, of my, this thing was happening. I was like, where is this one coming from now? It had just happened a few meters away from where we were. When I drove further, I saw the vehicles that collided. And the human beings inside were all dead. This was how they loaded them like bags of rice inside. Because of the irresponsibility of our government. You put police on the road. I was in front of a particular, at the back of a particular bus. You need to see the loads this bus was carrying. Bag of rice bag of curry, bag of cashew, bag of yam, bag of this. The whole boot was closed. The whole back was covered. The brake light. The Oibo man who made this car and put brake lights, put parking lights, put traffic door. Is he a fool? They put all this load behind the boot of the car. The brake light was covered. So if that man applies brake, you can't see the brake lights. Because the essence of that brake light is to tell the person coming behind that this guy is slowing. I was advancing this man. The man was slowing, yet I couldn't see him. I got so close before I knew that this man was trying to slow down. And he was trying to park. I didn't see the traffic at all. And I told the person with me, I said, can you see our problem as a country? Police will see this one on the road. But because of 20 naira, he will allow thousands to die. If you have compassion, if you have the interest and the heart for people, if you see a thing like that on the road, you will not collect 50 naira and then tell that guy to endanger lives on the highway. You will pack that vehicle. You will make sure everything in that vehicle is brought down. You will discharge the passengers in that vehicle. I did it one time. Of course, our citizens are also irresponsible. I saw something like that. This one was a tipper with a bus competing on the road. I was like, look at human beings in this bus. Look at this reckless driver. You know, I overtook the vehicles. 
and went so far and backed at the police checkpoint and came down. I said, stop those two cars. Stop them. Stop them, sir. Stop them, sir. Stop them, sir. So what happened? I said, they want to die. They want to kill themselves. Stop them. Stop them. And the policemen waved them down, cocked their gun and packed them. When they packed, I now leave my complaint. Do you know the driver was packing? Get them there. Get them there. All the passengers in the bus joined the driver as they're calling me. Wicked man. Also, you know, pastor, if you all oh, 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 you can suit and you jury make a you know, driver be come with him. Jesus Christ. For people I'm fighting for. Only two women came to me and said, Sir, thank you. We have been warning this man. All the passengers in the bus have been saying, Driver, ride on. They have been riding on. Only two women came to me and said, Sir, please, thank you. We have been warning him. It's like the man is drunk. And do you know when the police checked, he was actually drunk. Yet there were people in the bus telling him, Ebano, driver and car, he did too much. Most accidents that happen sometimes, don't blame drivers. You don't know the passenger who was inside. I said, driver, I have an appointment. Move this car. Overtake that car. Overtake that trailer. Driver, I'm impressed. Keep moving. And when the thing happened, <laughs> Everybody died, then you pack. Oh, Jesus. We also contribute to it. Do we want to hear the truth in this country? That's why God raised this church. That's why God raised this church. I'll show you a few texts and I am good to go. What God wants is a team of selfless men and women in this age who are willing to give their life completely for a noble cause that's the thing we are living in now the message of egocentrism is over the message that points to you is gone anybody who is preaching you that message that is pointing to you is killing you the message of the now is the message of the kingdom the message of the kingdom points to the kingdom and is pointing to you as the one who is going to bring about that kingdom. Have you not enjoyed the goodies of heaven enough? I don't have a car. Who told you you don't have? A man who pursues the kingdom lacks no car. I don't have a house. Who told you? You are all in the kingdom. Have you not enjoyed the goodies of the kingdom enough? This air you breathe. This life you live. This health you have, you are not in the hospital. I didn't know dividends of the kingdom. Actually, in our kingdom, nothing is a right. They are all privileges. In this kingdom, we will belong. Nothing is a right. Your life is not your right. It's a privilege. I don't know how you woke yourself this morning. I don't know how. I don't care how many bodyguards you have. They can't wake you up from sleep. My bodyguard woke me up. Lies. He that keepeth Israel woke you up. I don't care. I've seen people surrounded by different battalions. Different ammunitions. Gates upon gates. Before you get to their, their own apartment. Yet they slept and didn't wake up. Have you not enjoyed the... the benefits of the kingdom so much. What is this selfishness parading the space? What is this? We are in church, yet we are not asking God, God, what can we give you? Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us health. Thank you for everything so far. Even the ones that we have not finally had, thank you still. This time, Lord, what can I give to you? Do you know the fastest way to answer all prayers is hooking up to the kingdom? The fastest answer, the fastest route to receiving answers to prayer is hooking up to the kingdom. Hooking up to the kingdom. 
hooking up to the kingdom. Hooking up to the kingdom. You want a very sweet wife, hook up to the kingdom. You want a sweet husband, hook up to the kingdom. You want a sweet life, hook up to the kingdom. Simple. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.